Welcome back this morning in our Sunday Spotlight, Dr. Redenka Marich. In late September, she became the 17th president of the University of Connecticut after serving as interim president since February. Dr. Marich is joining me in Studio A this morning. Welcome. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, Eric. Tell me a little bit about this job because it's easy to say president of UConn, but there's a lot of campuses, a lot of people. It's a big role. Uh, it's a fabulous job because I truly believe that you have a great joy when you serve students. Uh, you have opportunity to impact many. You have opportunity to empower many people. Uh, and I love the job. I love Yukon. I believe it's Yukon. I had been at Yukon for 12 years. I never dreamed that I will be a president. So this is something new. It's a, it's a lot of things to get done. It's a lot of things to celebrate, but I think we are doing an amazing job. Let's talk a little bit about your professional background. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned being at UConn for 12 years. 2010, you came as a professor. Your background is in clean energy and sustainability. You've published 300 articles and have six patents. So this isn't somebody who went from you know being a dean to this to a dean to that, and now you're the president. You have a big time technical background. Does that help you in this job? Uh, yes, absolutely, because our students uh, care so much about climate change, uh, societal challenges, and one of them is a climate change will not uh, be addressed without us working together. Uh, and I truly believe that we can uh, we can do a lot of things to address the climate change, and that's priority of our students. That's priority of my, of me. I talk to governor regularly about the things that we can do and what is in our power. Um, and I had been working on the green technologies and energy since the uh, early 90s. And uh, you said that you hope the campus can be campus neutral by 2030, which is certainly a big goal. What do you bring as president? that someone who, whether it's a parent of someone who goes there or a student or maybe a prospective student someday, that you can say, this is why, this is why I got you. This is why I'm the person in charge and it's in good shape. Um, I, I believe in power of education. Let me start with that. Uh, we are fully committed and dedicated uh, to enhancing the lives. Uh, and uh, we do that through education. Uh, we do that through research. We do that through innovation and discoveries, and we do that through collaboration. I think collaboration is a key word, because without the collaboration all over the globe, we will not address the climate change issue. And that's a global issue, but politics are local. So we have to work with many entities in order to be ready and be carbon or zero neutral you know, by 2030 and 2040. Two things make your appointment as president uh, sort of noteworthy and one is being an internal candidate which hadn't happened in a long time and also being the second woman in the job do you think that either of those things bring special qualities that you can can help as you carry out your duties uh, I think there are big advantages because I care about students I I know our faculty I believe in our faculty and staff we have amazing people who care, who care about students and who care about education. I always said student first. For me, everything is about students. I'm mother of three huskies, you know, so I bleed blue. So that's, that makes, uh, you know, the big difference. Knowing institution, believing in institution, and working as a team player to empower everybody to achieve new highs. You say you're the mother of three Huskies, you bleed blue. That's an expression that's often used in relation to the sports teams. And there's been a lot of coverage over the past few years about deficits run by the athletic department. And I think it may be natural to have some butting of heads between academics and athletics, especially when it comes to budgets. Now you're the, you're the top Husky. Where does that fit in? Where do you see athletics role in this university? I think it's so important. And when I talk about university, I talk about excellence, excellence in the in the classroom, excellence in the lab, excellence in the hospital, excellence in the courtroom, excellence in athletics. Uh, when I was faculty, I had, uh, I had doubts. Why do we spend so much time and money and investment into athletics? And I definitely have different perspective now that I'm president because I see that excellent. I see how that builds the character, builds resilience of our students, athletes. I see how much that brings the prominence to our university, to our state. Uh, when I was a student in Japan, nobody talked about deficit in Connecticut, but everybody knew about Huskies and Jim Calhoun and Gino and what they done for UConn. Uh, so you learn 
and, and, and they're opening many doors and many opportunities for us. And I think it's very important. How about the general area there? I know there's other campuses and I don't want to neglect them, but certainly people think of the Stories mm -hmm. campus when they think of UConn. And that area, some related to the university, some related to the surrounding community, has changed remarkably mm -hmm. over the last few years. Does that help your position as a national university to have a little bit of growth and improvement? Absolutely. You know, I'm so grateful to our legislators. You know, they they done an amazing job in believing in Yukon and investing in Yukon. And it started with Yukon 2000. It started with the next gen. So one month ago, I was talking in Boston on the panel among president of Northeastern universities, and they said, what makes university great? What makes the land grant university great and how that grows? And I says, great and visionary legislators and governor and people who believe and people who invest. We have 30 seconds left. Tell us some of the things that you're looking forward to doing during your tenure. Uh, I'm looking for giving the skills to our students that are going to prepare them for the life journey. And those skills are creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, and emotional intelligence. Well, someone who came up through the ranks as a professor has that technical background. I know you talked a lot uh, to UConn today when they did the profile about mentoring. Uh, certainly someone in, in the top job who can and do that. Uh, we appreciate you being with us here. We wish you the best of luck, and hopefully you'll come back and talk to us again. Thank you, and great to meet another Huskies. There, Congratulations. There, there you go. Thank, Thank you. you. That is CT23 for this week. CBS Sunday Morning is next. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll meet you back here in Studio A next Sunday morning.